Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to another live edition of Mafia Roundtable with Dominic Sicali. Sorry, everybody, I'm late, but um, we had some computer issues from sabotage, but thank God for Apple. Apple has a great product, and right away, uh, from viruses to everything, so um, this had something to do with the link with YouTube, so it wasn't allowing me in. Apple was protecting the computer. So we're good to go now. So hope everybody's having a great day. Again, I apologize for being late. So while I was late, you should have went on egvodka.com and bought some vodka. Folks, it's excellent. Go online. You won't be disappointed. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. Today's show, you won't be disappointed either. We have a lot of stuff. We'll uh, go over. I look at my notes. This is all new stuff, and we're good to go, folks. We're really good to go. And I want to, I can't wait till John Jr. comes on the internet on his YouTube channel. Oh, I would love that. That's going to be interesting. And not only uh, if he's stating misfacts or he has something negative to say, I'm okay about me, negative, but just be accurate with what you say. And uh, that's it. There'll be no issues. But if there are, oh, we're going to go at it, but it's all good. It's having fun. So um, just actually, I had come back from the ear doctor, and it's a funny story. Uh, every time my wife is talking to me, I'm like, what? What would you say? I didn't hear you. So she's like, you need to get your ears checked. You need. I said, you need to speak louder and stop speaking away from me. It's like, no, you're losing your hearing. I went, my hearing is perfect for my age. Perfect. She couldn't even believe that it was so good. Uh-oh, there's Maddie. She's looking in, so I have to stop talking. So I says, so I told the doctor, I said, well, I have to tell my wife that my hearing's perfect. So and I says, well, at my age, it's called selective hearing. <laughs> so she started laughing. They gave me the paper. I came home right away. Maddie's like, so you see, you're listening to music too loud. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I'm like, no, I have perfect hearing. So she's like, I know deep down she's thinking, bitch, then you better hear when I'm talking to you. And right now she's shaking her head like a bobble doll. So, um, folks, um, listen, we're going to have fun today going into topics people never heard. I'm just waiting for the uh, view account to come up a little bit so uh, people could hear it from the live story. Um, just want to thank everybody for the support, understanding, even some of the haters. They're writing me, Dom, I didn't like you, I didn't like this, I didn't like this, but at least you keep it real. That's all I ask, folks. That's all I ask. Be 100, be real, and we're good to go. So we're going to talk about Joe Messino becoming boss. Um, and that was after Phil Rustelli died. Um, he died. Joe Messino was actually incarcerated at the time. So it's funny. It's really funny. You have Sal Vitale, who is a capital regime in the family, Anthony Spiro. You have um, a slew of guys, Louis Restivo, Louis Haha, Big Lou, James Taglione. Um, they were all there. They were all there. Uh, Sal Vitale called for a meeting with the administration, all the, uh, the capos at the time. And then somebody nominated... Joe Messino to take over the crime family. And then somebody second the nomination. And Joe was a shoe in for the crime family boss from prison. He was in jail. That's the power Joe Messino had. To do it when you're incarcerated, it's amazing. But he had the right people there, right ears. And other than Spiro, I heard nothing but good things about him. Tough guy, good guy. Um, never had the opportunity to meet him. And actually, Spiro was the consigliere of the family. He wasn't even a captain. He was a consigliere. So um, it's just Louis Haha. I met him in uh, MDC Brooklyn back in 2005. He was living in Florida. He really had was away from all the BS. But he got caught up on a case with of everybody who cooperate. Seemed like a real good guy, serious guy, nice, like nice. You could tell he had quality. So I would say him and Spiro, and then for the rest, Vitali, um, Taglione. Well, I only met James that I didn't meet him in person, but I knew he was cooperating. He was living in Florida. 
So I don't know him in his heyday. Uh, Louis Restivo, when I met him, I'll tell you a funny story. I'm in Casablanca with Vinny. I just came home or just into the Bronx. So Vinny said, come on, come to Casablanca. Joe Messino wasn't there. So we walk in Casablanca. Uh, Vinny introduces me to Louis Restivo. And as he's introduced me, I guess Louis was a little deaf of hearing. He's older. You know, at that time, the diabetes was going to his foot. Comes hobbling over and hugs me. Great to see you again. How have you been? And this and that. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm all right. I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you. So we leave. And I'm like, but he's like, how, how the hell you know him? I said, I don't. I never met him before. The fucking guy's senile. Then he started laughing his ass off. He goes, Bo, I thought you knew him. Oh, my God. He is crazy. He is losing his mind. It was We, we had laughs. But that's how Joe uh, gained power of the Bonanno crime family while he was incarcerated, folks. So, yeah, for those of you who don't know that, they had an administrative meeting and they uh, bumped him up. So now we have the extortion of the Wall Street disco. Joe Shakes, a.k.a. Joe DeStefano, used to be around Joe Zito of the West Side. Uh, as Zito got older, he had legal problems. Zito gave DeStefano and Louis Restivo, the Bonanno family, he gave them this, uh, this Wall Street disco. Um, DeStefano was from Long Island, knew Vitali's wife and children. Approximately 1986, Vitali had his own legal troubles. Went through, thought it was a good idea to have DeStefano around to take care of his family in case he got locked up. Um, Vitali asked Restivo to release DeStefano to him. And of course, Restivo agreed. He's not going to say no, that's for sure. Um, to me, Lou, Louis my, Restivo might have been something in his heyday, but I didn't think so when I met him. And I also met Anthony Elmont, who used to run uh, Casablanca's. I just thought, in my opinion, nice guys, but to me, they were lackeys. They were just guys, yes boys, for Joe Messino. And that's what Joe Messino liked to have around him. But in approximately 1994, Vitaly sponsored DeStefano for membership in the Bonanno crime family. The DeStefano's uh, ceremony was held at the Marriott Hotel off of Route 9 in Long Island. So... Anthony Black Fiorino was also made at that time. I met Anthony Black. Um, actually, it was during a co-defendant meeting with Gino uh, when he came into the restroom. When we went into the restroom waiting for Gino to come in, um, Louis Electric went to introduce me to him, and he was hesitant. So I was just taken back. Maybe he didn't know me. He didn't know why we were there. Um so there was nothing that transpired. He just wound up leaving. We told him, I turned around and said, do me a favor, get out of the bathroom. And he walked out and that was it. Um, I just, I kept at that. And Vinny asked me, did you go into him? Like, you know, you're supposed to be introduced. I said, nah, Vinny, just the time wasn't right. I didn't want Gino coming in and see I'm ripping somebody a new asshole. So I let it go. I let it go. He, he knew. Because when Louis Electric said, this is Dominic, he's a captain in our family, um, I just didn't like it. So I just said, do me a favor. Nice meeting you, but get out. And he just left. He left real quick. So, um, you know, they're out of co-defending me. And so I understood a little bit, but I didn't like, I was a little nasty just on purpose. So in approximately the 80s, um, the club was open and, and uh DeStefano wanted to approach them to pay protection money. So uh, they started shaking down the place. They were getting $600 a month. Um, actually, they agreed to pay $1,200, $600 DeStefano, and then he was kicking up $600 to uh, Messino and Vitali, which they split $300 apiece. So, and that, that was, it was amazing back then um, how you could do things. Vitali. Uh, was not aware of any problems or disputes that occurred at the Wall Street disco. And at the time, uh, may have been approached by a guy named Bl Glenn paying protection money. So to them from Desta, to DeStefano, I'm sorry. Uh, Vitali met Messino with, to give him uh, his monthly payment at King's Caters. Um, they also did sports bet betting from Paide Filippo and Vinny Asaro. 
So, you know, they were taking down money. That's that's what the crime family is about, taking down money. So, and that's about it. Then we have um, also back then a conspiracy to mur murder William Caprielli. Um, in the early 90s, Frankie Lino, Bobby Lino Sr., they told Sal Vitale they were having problems with Caprielli and that he was doing his own thing. He wasn't listening, wasn't showing up, being defiant. That's the same thing I had with Gino. Wasn't listening, being defiant. And there's two things. You could shelf somebody, which you don't want to do, because if they're being defiant, they're not listening, they don't want to have to answer to anybody. They're doing things on the sneak that you can't govern, you can't watch or oversee. And that everybody is accountable. Or you could ask to kill them. In this situation, um, Lino said he wanted to kill uh, Caprielli. And Sal Vitale and... He gave, actually uh, went to Joe. Joe agreed, and they gave them permission. Lino and, um, um, I'm sorry, Lino and his cohort, uh, Frankie Lino and Bobby Lino, they gave them permission to kill him. And um, Will Caprielli was in Frankie Lino's crew, and what happened was they never killed him. So uh, Vitaly and Messino figured out oh, they worked it out. But folks, you never ask, if you're going to ask to kill somebody, from my experience in the life, and you're given permission, move forward and do it. Because if you don't do it, there's a sign of weakness. Um, Joe Messino probably, because if it gets to that point, you know, you should act this way. It shows the bosses, it shows your superiors that you're a serious person. You don't take BS. Um, but I guess they worked it out and they, um, you know, he didn't die. He didn't get killed. So, you know, we have now football tickets. Everybody knows when football season comes around, there's all different ways to make money. Um, George Philippone and he had partners, a partner, Danny Roach, in a gambling operation that involved football tickets. So they went to South Vitale to see if Vitale would back them. Vitaly said yes. Vitaly never had to come out of his pocket for a dime. Usually uh, with the football tickets, they're the most profitable. Well, I shouldn't say most profitable. I would say percentage-wise, you're really not going to lose. Um, it offsets itself, especially if you have a big uh, big ticket sales. So they were doing a lot of things, and uh, Vitaly and Messino split the proceeds. Vitaly gave always – I wouldn't say always – but he gave half to um, to Joe Messino. Joe Messino was away, so he made sure he had his half every week or every month to tally up. And it came to the point they were doing the tickets at King's Caters. They had the catering trucks uh, that was around the Bananos, Joe Messino and Sal, where they would give it to the truck drivers. So when they're at the lunch sites, they pass out all the tickets and then tally up at the office. When Joe Messino came home, he put a stop to that. He's like, God forbid somebody tells or puts heat, you're going to destroy our catering business because we're doing illegal activity out of it. So, um, you know, Joe had the common sense where Sal, I guess, didn't. And that's surprising because I heard Sal was a pretty sharp guy in, uh, in himself. But, you know, money, uh, money changes people, folks. It just happens that way. But they were putting a lot of money in their pocket from all different things. So, um, and that's it. And even in my life, my day, in the mob football season season was great for us i mean i maybe the last two years before i got locked up uh we had a Vinny had a guy around him lenny we used to call him um college guy out of college he built a massive business had great clients and uh we did a sports betting operation with him we integrated into him brought it to costa rica uh, Jerry Asaro and Jack Bonaventuro had their offices there and we all partnered up. We all partnered up and we were making a ton, a ton of money, just especially on the one client who would bet five to $7 million on a weekend in football. And it would always offset. So it, it sounds like a lot, but when you're betting, you're winning here, losing here, losing, 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 win, win, win. So where you make your money is the juice interest that gets tagged on, um, the percentage. And then he, he had some really good losing weeks. I mean, we put away a lot of money. 
And I know we had just saw uh, Lenny had customers, maybe 110, 120 customers. They ranged anywhere from a thousand dollar bets or a thousand dollar credit line to maybe thirty, forty thousand dollar credit lines. He ran all that, kept all the books on that. We didn't do anything. We would just tally up at the end of the week, and then um, into the following week. Every I'm sorry, everything would tally up on a Monday. So. Um, and everything from that Monday on, we're going to the following week. But uh, that's about it. Oh, we have a lot more stories. I have a ton, a ton of stuff, murders and this and that. So pardon me for being a little speedy today. We were running behind. Like I said, just came from the ear doctor. And it is a chilly day in Orlando. So it's chilly over here. So, but it's nice. It feels good. I have the sweatshirt on, hat. Had a great workout this morning. Like I told everybody with the workouts, uh, we're scheduling something with a Highline gym that we're going to go in and film where I could show people proper technique, proper form, um, and what they should do and what they shouldn't do while lifting, while doing bench press, shoulder press, uh, back workout, leg workout, tricep, bicep. Um, we'll touch base on everything. And remember, walk, crawl, and run, especially working out. You have to do it. Especially as you get up in age, that's that's definite, definite. People, go please go to egvodka.com. Order your vodka today. We have three flavors: 100% organic, gluten free. You will love it. You will not be disappointed. And we're setting up some type of subscription, some type of holiday rebate. So we're putting everything together, and it'll be well worth it. Well worth it, definitely. Okay, let's go into some of these uh, comments. We have Maddie here. If she'd like to read some. Oh, she has a thing up. Yeah. Odin says, uh, uh, Dominic, were you locked up with Brit with a Brit that goes by the nickname Snot Boogie? Snot Boogie? No. I don't know who's Snot Boogie. Sorry. Uh, who do we have? Okay. Mar Marco Rico. Dom, please discuss movies on an episode. Which movies are the most realistic to the life and which are the most unrealistic? And why? Okay. I will do that. I will take some time because what I'll do is maybe I'll pick four or five movies and I'll explain my reasoning on these movies and then we'll take it from there. So Paul Trentacosta says, Dom, I'll be in Tampa this upcoming March. What is your recommendation for a great Italian restaurant? Much love from Dirty Jerz. Uh, I'll go to Bocelli's restaurant where we did the show. Excellent Italian food. Just ask for Mike, uh, tell him I sent you, and uh, hit me up on Instagram. I'll make sure you're taken care of when you go there, when you get in. But do it then so I remember to have a lot of things going on. Um, the Johnny Rocks, I've met uh, Joe Merlino and Dominic Sicali. They are both good guys. Thank you, Johnny. Uh, listen. Again, people have nothing against Joey. I'm sure if the circumstances were different, we'd be palling around. Seems like he has a lot of charisma, can have a lot of fun with him. Um, and that's it. I don't knock it. He's, stand, he's a stand-up guy. I cooperated. So I'm good with that. Uh, Anthony Michael says, Dom, you and Michael Frenzies and Michael Mikey Scars need to do a show together to make these haters hopefully fade away. Uh, definitely. I would like to do that. I spoke with Mikey Scars. We're just waiting for Michael Frenchies to free up that we'll all sit down and go over it. We could talk, discuss and see how the format we're going to lay out, but I'm open to it. I know Mikey Scars and Michael Frenchies, they're considering it. It seems like they're open to it. It's just, we have to make sure everything works out. Everybody's comfortable and just have a good time doing it. That's most important. Uh, sir, verization. Don, did you ever meet Carl Alzheimer? Carl Alzheimer? No, I did not. Not to the best of my knowledge. Hey, what's up, Pete Rock? How are you? Uh, did you know Patty Filippo lived in the Bronx on Carpenter Avenue? Patty D. Oh, I'm sorry. Patty D. Uh, you have to tell me his last name. There's a lot of Patties. So he was killed in 93, and then I could tell you. So Finland in the house and Scotland in the house. Uh, Stephen Lyle says, Dom, keep keeping it real. F the haters from Scotland. 
Scotland and Finland in the house. Peace, brothers, sisters in Scotland and Finland. Um, we have another one. What does the EG stand for in the vodka? Everything good. Every girl, every guy, every gangster drinks EG vodka. Joking aside, it's enlightened grain. But we have a lot of little catchphrases with it that I think are catchier. But enlightened grain, that was the reason for EG. Do you have anything? Uh, uh, Dominic, I lived in Anthony Spiro's neighborhood. He was, <clears throat> he has the pigeons on the roof on Bath Avenue. <laughs> a lot of guys had pigeons on the roof. Even Mike Tyson, pigeons. Don't mess with people's pigeons, folks. My father had a pigeon coop too. Loved his birds more than me. So, and uh, wait, we have another one that I want to answer. Dom, would you do an interview with John Gotti Jr.? I would do something with anybody. Doesn't matter. I would even sit down. People, you know what? At the end of the day, it is what it is. Even Joey Molino, and I, ne I never fool myself with anything. And I bring him up because he's the only one on these shows who didn't cooperate. Unless it's in a controlled environment where everybody's safe, everybody's secure, because I'm not a fool either. I'm not going to walk into something. Oh, that's not going to happen. Well, I can't say it's not going to happen. I would do my best that it doesn't happen. But we could have a healthy debate because it is what it is at the end of the day. And I guarantee you, we there's going to be times where I'm going to be running into people. They're going to be running into me. And I know all the Internet talk, even from myself, is not going to be, rah, rah, rah. you know, if we see each other, what's up? How you doing? Keep it like that. I'll be cordial. I'll be nice. But if stupid words come out of somebody's mouth, then it's a different story. I'll come back. You know, I'm going to hold my ground. I'm not going to instigate. But I'm going to treat everybody with respect. Good, bad, or indifferent. That's just the way I am. But um, I would have fun. I would have fun. I'm open for a debate. What can you call me? He call me a rat to my face. You know what? You're right. Cool. I think what you're doing is this, that, the other thing. And we could debate. We don't have to see eye to eye. It's not a bad thing. And you know what? People would love to see it. What are you doing on social media then? If you're not part of a crime family, you can't knock. You can knock me, but you have to be open to it then. Same thing. We have a contribution from Alexander Wilson. Dom, so John Gotti Jr. is coming out with a podcast. I'm wondering who they are going to talk about. I'm wondering too. Maybe the people who testified in John Gotti's trial, John Gotti Jr. I was one of them, but it wasn't anything personal. It was business from the government. I never met the guy before. Seems like a nice guy. He's a family man. I congratulate him for that. And um, I don't, you know, it just is what it is. I had it. They asked about the structure. I was basically there about the structure of Cosa Nostra, not being able to get out of it. And then conversations that Vinny relayed to me about what John Gotti wanted to do fight and trial and what Vinny wanted to do fight and trial. And they felt the same way. So it was just business. Scott D. Hey, Don, what do you think about Frankie Lino? Uh, Frankie Lino. Just, I don't know. I didn't know him. I don't like what he did, obviously. People don't like what I did. We have a Dominic. Where are your eyebrows? I don't know. I lost them somewhere in life. I used to have some thick eyebrows. They used to be real dark. Maybe I'll get the, like they do the hair. For the hair, they could do that with the eyebrows. So you'll see me with like bushy things like this next time. So see, I answer all, even questions I don't even want to talk about. It, it's all good. And I hope it made you a day, Dominic. Hope, you know, that, that made you feel good. So Ryan Brown, Dom, my super chats aren't working. My apologies for that. Two quick questions. Was Robert Perono, and he left it out there. Maybe he'll follow up. Okay. Um. Nadine NYC1, really love your show. Condolences for Fluff Fluff. Oh, thank you. We have Denmark, Camilla in the house. Thank you. Much love and respect to you as well. Hey, Dom. Would you bang ice? What's that? Ice spice? I have no idea. Yes, Dominic. Wonderful. Rat in the hat. Yeah, wow. You seem like a really intelligent guy. It's you missed your calling in life. You should have been a comic. 
Lee said, just watch Gene on the sit down podcast. Jeff asked him if he was going on Dom's show. He said he wants to stay away from the Joey drama. That's good. I'm glad. I'm glad Gene said that. He feels that way. But he just texted me this morning and he's looking to come back on. He wants to do a live that we're sitting together. So Gene is Gene. All I could do is give him advice. If he listens, he listens. He's his own man. And that's it. If he doesn't want to listen, I don't force anybody to do anything, you know. And it's up to him. If he wants to come on, doesn't want to come on, he's always welcome. He has a revolving door with me. Robert says, tell me about Richie Cantarella. Richie Cantarelli, I met him on a few occasions, never really spoke to him other than just pleasantries. Hello, how are you? Nice to meet you. Um, I didn't like his swag. I didn't care for it, but maybe he didn't like mine. So who am I to say? Um, he did work back in the day. Um, he was just different from what, the way Vinny explained some of his comments. I think he was too into himself. Tremendous, tremendous earner. Tons and tons of money he made. So uh, more power to him. Uh, Tommy Dimes. Hi, Dom. Did you know the late Li Nick La Sorsa? He was in the Gambino family. He owned a car dealership yes. in the Bronx, Webster Avenue, Gun Hill Road with his son. Yes, he was a car salesman. Uh, we met him. There was a few sit-downs with him. And during the sit-downs, when we walked off the table, Vinny's like, this effing guy, he's a car salesman. He still th he thinks he's selling us cars the way he's speaking. Uh, he didn't have respect for him. But uh, the guys who were there at the sit-down, the other Gambinos, he had respect for. When I say he, I mean Vinny. CJ, thank you for the contribution. How did the tickets work? Were they uh, parlay cards? A ticket has all your teams on, yes. You could bet three, three bets, four bets, five bets, six bets, up to ten on a ticket. And different, they pay out each amount. The more bets you place, the higher amount it pays out. So 10 for 10, I'm not sure I might pay 100 to 1, 200 to 1. I'm not sure what 250 to 1, 500 to 1. I'm not sure. We used to, I see teeth. And my wife's white teeth are smiling to hit me in the eyes. She has beautiful teeth. It only cost me $350,000 to put teeth in her mouth. I'm, I'm joking. Relax. My, I see here, I'm such an ass. Uh, Ooh. I'm smiling because Brian Brown, let me finish, was oh. Robert Perino killed because he became a born-again Christian and could have flipped. Also, did Louis, Louis Atancio and his brother nicknamed Ha Ha because they laughed every time they whacked someone. Xavier answered. Ryan Brown, the guy who became a born-again Christian, was the Colombo family, and Greg killed him. The guy's name was Joe, unless you're talking about something different. So he answered it. Okay, me. thank you. Um, you're going to hear a lot of stuff. I have a lot of information about people I'd never met before. Even Tommy Karate will be talking about the murders he did, the things that happened that people don't know about. Hey, Dean. Hey, Dom. Any sit-down stories? Yeah, we have sit-down stories. We'll go through them, too, in due time. Um, Dean, I think I need, please uh, email me. The only things I'm missing is that has to be put on the order form, date of birth, and phone number uh, as part of the criteria. So I could get that out to you. Thank you, though, Dean. Thank you again. So Ryan said, also read a New York Post article where James Big Louie Tartaglione said that Vinny Bassiano had a man crush on John Gotti. Thoughts of him saying that and phrasing it that way? Um, I don't know about a man crush, but, you know, everybody, when somebody dresses nicely, sharp, sharp dresser, having their hair perfect, Vinny was impeccable. When he dressed, his hair, when he went out, everything from glasses to shoes to socks. I mean, he dressed the part, but Vinny acted the part as well, too. He didn't give people orders. He went. He handled business himself. That's where him and John Gotti were totally different. They were two, both of them, keep it real, they were two degenerate gamblers, loved to gamble. But the only difference was Vinny did all the work himself. He was there. Every every time, except once when he was away and I had to handle the um, Pozzolo hit. We have another contribution. Um, hey, Dom, can you tell about a Jerry Chili story? Yeah, we'll go into that. We'll definitely go into that. Um, we'll go into Jerry Chili's 
you know, one of the old timers who uh, would crack jokes, funny guy, nice guy. I liked him. Um, okay, I was impressed with Chris, uh, Chris Bonanno. I have no idea. Or you mean Chris Colombo? Anthony Colombo. I don't know. I don't know. Chris. John Kulowski, did you know Steve Mazzacola? Uh, no, I did not know Steve, and I think you got the name wrong, um, but that's all right. I know who you're talking about. CJ, where can I get some EG in Orlando? Thanks, Dom. Excuse me. Don't don't look at me. <laughs> so, um, hold on. While while we're answering questions, I'll look it up real quick. I know there is some liquor stores. So Ryan Brown have also it. is asking about EG being shipped to Massachusetts. So I'm heading to New York in a couple but of weeks. You can't, yeah. Distributor, okay. Distributorship. Um, yeah, if, I think, I'm not sure if it can be shipped to Massachusetts right now, but I'll work on it. The way we're working on Ohio, I'll mention Massachusetts if it's not already. Obviously, it's not available. So we'll definitely work on it to get it there. Okay, just bear with me. I'm going to find the Orlando. Jam and Jet, did you of uh, CZ Produce in Morris Park in the Bronx, 914 in the house? If what? I'm sorry. Did did you of uh, CZ Produce in Morris Park in the Bronx? 9, no. 914 in the no, house? No, yeah, no, I didn't go to Morris Park like that, um, especially to... Um, uh, to shop, and I stayed in Pelham Bay, Throg's Neck. And if I did go get produce, um, yeah, no, it was in my own areas. I didn't go to in the, over there. John Gotti never killed anyone with his own hands. I heard that. Um, so, but I think he was involved in one homicide, but the rest were orders. So, but Vinny was different. Vinny took care of all the business himself. Camila says uh, hi to Maddie. Um, Denmark in the house. Wow, Dominic, learn to read the both of yous. Wow, that, what, where have you, please recommend your English tutor. Please, both of yous. Thank you. Thank you, Dominic. You're so intelligent. Thank you. We have, we have a comic in the house here. Dominic, yeah. <laughs> what I really want to say, it starts with a J. And it ends with an F. So figure it out. Let's see if he's sharp. Use. Uh, EG's bet. We got a mic. E is EG better than Tito's? There is zero comparison, folks. And yeah. again, I'll, I'll keep it 100. If there's no EG at a place, I'll either drink Kettle or Tito's. That's my choices. If there's no EG... Hands down, there is no comparison. Zero, by far, by far. EG is so good, it's dangerous. It's dangerous, so you have to drink responsibly when you're drinking it. That's how smooth it is. You don't taste it, especially you're putting a mixer in it. It, it, it is that. It is great. It is great. And 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 why is it? Because it's certified organic, which is. It, it, uh, it's produced without the use of synthetic pesticides, fertilizers, or other harmful chemicals. So, I mean... Yeah, and furthermore, we have a distilling process. We have a master distiller in Portland, Oregon, and it's distilled, for, it's gravity-fed through burnt coconut tusk. Um, we use the Bull River Reserve, which is supposed to be the purest water in the world with, uh, with all the minerals and stuff. And then we import our wheat from Italy. So, folks, I'm telling you, it is that good. And even our flavors are zero, zero additives. We use everything's all natural. Um, by my books, Maddie sounds like a beautiful woman. Why isn't she in front of the camera? Because I'm not dressed. I just put my hair up. I walk the dogs. I'm doing my exercise. And, and I don't even think she brushed her teeth, oh, folks. I <laughs> I'm joking. Oh, she gets mad. Like, I'm joking. I'm they know mad. that. I my teeth. <laughs> oh my God. Help me. You know what? I tell her a lot of times I need to go back to prison. I have more freedom. 
I have more. Oh, my God. She's worse than a warden. I mean, she'll come in. Hey, pick this up. Pick that up. Pick this up. Look at that little crumb over there in the corner behind the salt shaker. You left a crumb. I'm like, what the fuck? It's like Inspector Clouseau with a magnifying glass. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Clean up. Oh, yourself. clean That's up. Damn. Put the toilet bowl down. Oh, my God. I won't even tell you how she has me peeing. So uh, we're not even going to go there. Uh, you can't sit here and say, Joe, oh, come on. Stop with the nonsense. So, so, so oh, no, no, I'm going to read it. You can't sit here and say, John Gotti did not do work. We don't know. Yes, correct. But it's known. It's known. He, if anything, he pulled the trigger one time. It's no big deal. It's not an embarrassment. I use the comparison. Vinny did it 12 times. I know he killed 12 people himself, and he didn't have to. So that's the difference. I didn't finish because I want. I don't like people to say, well, you didn't read everything that I wrote. But he got made during the time you had some plus, did a piece of work for Paul Castellano with Joe Messino. Yes, they do. Actually, I was looking through my notes, and I saw that. So I'll be talking about that. Uh, I think you're referring to the Boriello hit. So we'll definitely be talking about that. And I think that's where Tommy Karate, I'm not sure if it was his first piece of work, but that's where he pulled the trigger. So stay tuned to that one, them disposing the body and everything. Uh, Joey Frakes, Dom, since you're into hip hop, please check out OT, the real, a real street certified white rapper at a mass and he slaughters beats. Okay. I will check it out. Okay, let's see. I'm going back to the liquor store. There is a liquor store is called Pat's Liquor Leaf and Wine. It's on out off of Alafaya Trail. And then there's also a Pat's Liquor Store in Sanford. But folks, wait, I'm just working out a deal with a liquor store in Orlando and they're putting in a massive order where the pricing will be unbelievable. Of course, the bigger the order, then, you know, there's rebates uh, that could be get, given out as far as their purchasing power. So uh, I would wait this way. The price is down and Pat's, it was a little bit high. Uh, so I went there last week as well, and I wouldn't recommend buying it. You could buy it online, though. Go online. Uh, if you don't want to go online, you're in the Orlando area. Uh, I'll give you the recommendations and I'll let them know I'm supposed to be sitting down with them today. So I will do that. Stugatz, any thoughts on Lenny and Skinny Phil from Morris Park? I once saw Lenny fistfight wearing a suit on the Sunday morning. If you're talking about Lenny, who was with the Albanians, I don't like him at all. Um, in jail, I heard a lot of stories. He started paying people. And I'm not sure, and I'll confirm it, Gene would know better than I because he just came out of the system. But I think, I want to say Ace and Johnny Joe went to work on him. Well, somebody did, but I'll get to the story. I'll look at my notes, see who told me what, where it came from, and then we'll uh, we'll address that. I didn't care for Lenny, that's for sure. Richie J76, hi, Dom. My wife and I tried EG a few nights ago in Orlando. Great smooth vodka. Thanks for all the content. Much respect for the message you are putting out. Thank you. I'm glad you liked it. There, even the haters out there, when you try it, you can't say, this is the best. And I'm a vodka drinker, folks. I would never be boasting this much. Because as people, I think, see my character, I don't like to be made a fool of. I don't like to be embarrassed, just like anybody else. But I'm more prideful with that. That's why I like to be accurate. Whether right, wrong, or indifferent, I will apologize to show I'm man enough to say when I'm wrong. But I stick to my guns. And I wouldn't be promoting this vodka if it wasn't that good. Trust me, you will not be disappointed. Not at all. CT, what are your thoughts on Manson family? The Manson family, Charles Manson, uh, if it was Charles Manson, very, very crazy. <laughs> Gene was kind of chill on that Nadu interview. Oh, hell yes. Gene was probably on more volume than you could even think. I'm just joking. He was probably, after the workout, he was more calm. He wasn't, I think with me, he was more hype with everything that just went on, where he's just 
he, it takes him days to calm down from situations. Yeah, that was, so, that was good. It shows and that. it shows he can be, he listens. Cause I tell him, Gene, you have to calm down. You have to, you're better than that. And, um, that's about it. So I'm glad it seems like he's listening. Hopefully, you know, somebody don't push his buttons that he goes off the handle and winds up in trouble. So it's just a walking process. You have to walk, crawl, and run. And hopefully he's walking real slow. Hey, Dom, you mentioned the Ugeo Feast on Waters Place. That feast is still going on in East Harlem, run by the Gilio Society of East Harlem. That's great. That's great. Those feasts are nice to walk, especially the sausage and peppers. I remember we had the feast by, behind Hazel Towers, which is a building in Mulford Avenue in Pelham Bay section of the Bronx. It was ran by, there was an old man corporal in a wheelchair and Fat Mongo. Fat Mongo had the gamble intent. And at that time when I was young, uh, I used to love sausage and peppers. My father had a when he came home from jail, he did the sausage and pepper stand with Frankie Amato. And uh, I had fun there at the stand. I ate whatever I wanted. But before my father even came out of jail, I don't know how Mongo knew. Somebody, I think, told him that's Donnie's son. And, um, you know, Corporal would always give me a job. Actually, at one time, he even gave me, had me do a lemonade stand, my own lemonade stand. Didn't charge me anything for the spot. I think Corporal mentioned Mongo was looking for somebody to be his runner, his like little lobo, his little gopher. So Corporal asked me if I wanted the job. I'm like, hell yeah, I want the job. So I would sit by him, a hey, kid. Now everybody would come over to him. I At the time, I don't know. I see guys dressed up. They're made guys. They're wise guys. They're coming over, sitting with him. Hey, kid, get me a sausage and pepper sandwich. Okay, go run out. Hey, kid, go get me a beer. Okay. And they would give it to me because he introduced me to them and said, if you see him, just give it to him, bring it back. And I would bring it back. And I'm getting five and $10 tips. I'm like, woo, I was loving it. Loving it. How old were you? Eight, nine, I think. <laughs> I was loving it. I was cashing in. Yeah. Okay. I remember one year they had the gamble intent and they had me just collecting all the change. And at the end of the night, it was the last day of the feast, I'm collecting all the change for the gambling things, putting it on the side, and they let me keep all the change. They said, keep it. You know, of course, there was dollars and everything, but I got to keep the change. I might have had about $50, $60, and back then, that was money. So I was like, yes. Mm -hmm. Came up, can't wait till the following year the feast comes around. Measured reality. Dom, did you have any connection to Corners on the White Plains Road in the Bronx? That place was a gold mine in the 80s and 90s. White Plains Road? White Plains Road. No. The only corners I knew was off of Waterbury Avenue. Cousins Corners, it was called. Before that, it was Waterberries. When it was Waterberries, that was a Genovese presence over there. It was powerful people in that time. And I'll tell the who's who's back once um, the time is right, then I could expose that. But um, that's the only Cousins Corners or Cousins I knew about. John asked, do you know what the beef was between Gino Galestro and an associate by the name Little Nicky? Gino had him chased. No, I don't know. Uh, it's weird to hear Gino now like a tough guy when I put my hands on him and he wouldn't do shit. Punked down like a little bit. Um, he just punked down. I'll keep it at that. So uh, it's amazing now all of a sudden <laughs> – He's a tough guy, so it's just it's mind blowing. Dom, did you ever meet Joey Joe Cigar Sprecolino? No, I did not. The Vinny seemed to enjoy the violence, or was it just business with him? Vinny didn't enjoy violence; it was business. He handled himself um, and did what he had to do. I mean, I know the two guys he killed at one time. They threw in a van. There was blood all over the van. Um, and I'll go into that at a later date, but that was because of Sally Daz. They tried, uh, they did rob Sally Daz at one time back in the day, going back in the day, gave him a little knock on his head and, uh, Sally knew who it was within that week. Those guys were no longer around. Vinny took care of them, took them out. So Jamie asked, hi, Dom. Hello from Scotland. How long were you in the life before you cooperated? 
Um, I was in the life my whole life. Um, as how long was I a maid guy? It was probably about two years, year and a half, two years. Um, and that's it. And Vinny's thing was, <clears throat> even when I elevated, I knew more about the life than the guys in the life. I mean, I had uh, situations. I'll give you one situation. I was, um, Vinny said, go to the club. We had Louis Cigars. He was out of, I think, Queens. Sitting at the club. He was a club guy. So, and Vinny told him, do whatever you want there. If you lend him money, whatever you do, you keep it. I don't want any vig. Just watch the place. I want a presence in the place. So Louis agreed. He liked that. So one day I came in. I walk in. I have to talk to him. Now, Louis in my crew. I'm a captain. So Louis sitting down playing cards. I said, hi, every, how's everybody doing? Hey, Dom. Hey, Dom. Hey, Dom. These were all men. Louis was much older than me. He had to be in the 60s. So I said, hey, Lou, I need to speak to you. Puts up a hand. Okay, one second. Wait. I didn't say anything. We leave. We go outside to talk. He has played his hand out. Uh, go around the corner. And I ripped him a new asshole. Who the F do you think you are? You're telling me to wait? Next time you ever do that? I said, do you know the life? Do you know the life? You might not respect me, but you're going to respect the title. I apologize. I didn't realize it. Well, I think you better start realizing it because next time, I don't care who's around. I'm going to embarrass you bad, bad. And if you want to take it any other level, we'll take, we'll handle it. Dom, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I just let it go. And then when we were leaving, I said, Louie, stayed there maybe about 15 minutes after I told him what I had to tell him. And as we're walking back, I said, Louis, please, I apologize. You're my older. I have respect for you, but don't do that again. Don't let me, you know, that's disrespectful. And he knew it. He got the point. Maybe three weeks goes by. I have to go back <laughs> to this place. And I didn't like clubs. I didn't care for it. I wasn't a club guy. I walk back in. Just so happens everybody's there. Louis playing cards again. And as soon as, hey, guys, how's everybody doing? They're in the middle of a hand. Louis looks up. I don't know. I'm just going to make up a name. Louis turns around. Hey, Joey, come here. Come here. Come here. Take my hand. Take my hand. And gets up real quick to come walk away with me. I'm like, no, 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 no. Lou, sit down. Sit down. Play out the hand. That's okay. We walk outside. I thanked him for doing that. But that was my way of getting back to show everybody in the place I'm in charge. He just didn't get up to get up but to show them. And I made my point. So there's different ways to skin a cat. That was my way of doing it. But I like Louie. Uh, we actually went to a steakhouse in Queens. Who's in there? Louie. I think it was, um, uh, let's say Peter Lugas. I think it was Peter Lugas. We were there. We went there. I went there with Ace, Joey Gambini. And um he happened to be there. He knew them. He sat down with us, cracked open a few bottles of wine, had a great time. Can't stop, won't stop. Thanks for the contribution. When you were away, how did you feel about the West Coast car or DC guys? Share some interesting interactions with those groups, please. Um, the DC guys, they're wild. Uh, I got along with them. Uh, I was close in Lewisburg with Rayful Edmund III. And then we happened to meet there. When I cooperated, he was cooperating. We we're in the same unit together. We bickered back and forth, but I like him. Good guy, great basketball player, strong. And I feel bad. He did a ton of time. I hope he's home and uh, doing the right thing with his life. I hope if Vinny gets out, he leaves you alone. You're not that person anymore. That's no, I'm not. I'm not. But I can understand he, you know, the way he would think. And he's not going to act immediately. But eventually, I, my opinion, he's going to act. I know the way he is. And he's going to have to do what he has to do. And I, I respect that. I do. But when my time is up, it's up. The guy upstairs already has that written out. So CT writes, wise guys like gay men are very fastidious about their attire. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Very good. Why do you think the feds then violate Johnny Joe? I don't know. 
Maybe they dropped the ball on that one, not realizing his time ended. I, I don't know. I can't answer that. Um, you know, but I'll tell you one thing. Johnny Joe is as stand-up as they could be. Or maybe they have an ongoing investigation with something. That, you know, that could be a strong possibility. So if I was Johnny Joe, I'd watch who I'm associating with and be extremely careful. Be very careful. I like Johnny Joe a lot. Really good guy. So Stephen asks, hi, Dom. Do you know where in Sicily your family came from? I know that Pelham Bay had a large population from San Fratello. No, I don't. Um, and I'm going to find out, too. Because when I go there, I want to go to the town, see if they knew... Uh, I'm sure my grandmother, her heritage, the name and everything, but I definitely want to see my roots. I know I have cousins there. I have uh, relatives there. Um, but um, I was just away too long when I came home. My grandmother, you know, I'll find out. I'll find out. Uh, Don, was anyone in the family known to be a winning sports better? I haven't seen anybody that would be a winning sports better. At the end, look at the hotels in Vegas. If there was gamblers that win, there would be no Vegas. So some people do win. They're, they're good handicappers. But those handicappers, the casinos hire to put the odds to the odd. They become odds makers. If I'm correct, I could be wrong. Um Would you like, why, what's Blacked? An episode of Blacked. People, what's an episode of Blacked? Would your wife like to feature on an episode of Blacked? We pay all expenses. So that's, people, let me know what Blacked is. Because we might have an asshole on here with his comment. So, um, <laughs> why you keep asking my real name, but. Wasn't me, so I guess he's going over with somebody. Yeah, that's what. Why didn't Vinny rat and save his life? Uh, pride. Uh, Vinny's a gambler, so he thinks he's going to beat everything, and that's it. And remember, Vinny had four boys out there too. He didn't want to tarnish his name or make it hard. I can't speak for him, but I could say he's stand up a thousand percent. Then you have a lot of people saying he ratted me out. Because he should have never spoke about murders. But let Vinny tell you, because I had an altercation with him about that verbal. And Vinny said, you have to tell the boss. When the boss asks you, you have to tell him. No, you don't. Not that. You didn't tell him about the 12 people you killed. So why'd you tell him about somebody I killed? So that's just it. That's my feelings. But, you know, I look at him. You know, I feel for him. I hope he does come home one day. Um, measured reality. Don, how many times have you double parked at the Optimo on East Tremont and Bruckner Boulevard? Oh, woo, that's the, back in the day. All the time. You know that. Everybody did. Sometimes triple park, not even double park, triple park, where you can only get one car to go through. So many times, many times. Dominic, do you drink every day? No. No, I don't drink every day. Occasionally. Um and when I do, if it's like two or three days in a row, I might have two drinks and that's it. You know, and then when I really drink and I'll come home, my wife will be like, oh, you're feeling good, huh? How many drinks you had? Two, the first and the last. I got that from her father, my father-in-law. <laughs> and his name is Dominic, too. So to the Dominics out there, first and last. Is EG available at Tutto Fresca now? It better be. Joey better buy some bottles and fill load up. So I'll find out today. Where can you read 302s? Big views? I don't know where you could read them or find them. I'm sure maybe lawyers could find them. You have to go online, Google search. You know, I, that I don't know. And somebody asked about um, Lee Cole. Yeah, I like him. I like him. I like James, but you know, I get upset when they take my words and twist them a little bit. But no, I like them. I like them. I think they're putting out a good quality, and I hope they keep it as a good quality. And they have their favoritisms now, and I'm okay with it. But just don't mince my words. So that's all. But I like their shows. I like their what they're doing. I love their shorts. I think their shorts are really good too. 
Dom, did Bruno ever talk to you about the Galante hit? And did Bruno realize he was part of history? Bruno is a legend in his own mind. Nah, just joking. No, he is a legend. He is part of history. Uh, great guy. Very funny. Uh, I like. I love Bruno, not like him. But um, it is what it is. Dom, F the haters only exist. Only exists if you acknowledge them. Nah, it's all good. I'm okay with that. Sammy said back in the day he would kill Lee Cole. Yeah, probably would. Probably would. Or if not him, I think he said his guys would attack. So that's what Sammy was about. Let's let's do the guys. It's messed up. Black is a porn site, see? So jerk off. You know, put your mother on the porn site. I think she would do well. Put your mother, your sister, and your daughter on the... No, I don't like that stupid-ass comment. To me, that's a punk. Thanks, David. So he needs to put his mother out there. So mother, grandmother, daughter, and sister. Put them on a porn site. You know who that is? It could probably be... Uh, and put your wife there. Roldan, put your wife there. So or the Roldan crew, put your wife there. That's another uh, womanizer, predator. So part of the sexual harassment case. So he trolls. He trolls here too. He said it in court. Watches every day. Had to go get a gun, a gun because he fears me. So, but they want they want to push buttons. So put your wife over there. She she would she would love it. She would love to be trained. So, uh, what else do we have? Oh, Mike Anthony Michael, why'd you uh, delete your message? I was just about to read it. Dom, why does Lee Cole call you a mix between Herman Munster and Forrest Gump? If Lee Cole said that, he's going to get Cole slaughtered. <laughs> Part of the rap song I said about him and James. Go Google it. Uh, YouTube and on Google, you'll see. I had fun with that. But he's entitled to say whatever he wants. I'm cool with that. Giuseppe, who did Mike Nose kill besides his first wife? That was it. Oh, yeah. Who said that? Oh, Gene. He's saying Michael knows and Johnny jo No, no, no. Hell no. He was wrong with that. Michael knows is not a killer. Not a killer. So he, he all of a sudden, when they were supposed to kill George Sasha from Canada, the, the murder I just told you about prior a few days ago, Michael knows was sick. He, he, excuse. Johnny Joe's a stone cold killer. That's a fact. That's a stone cold fact. Mikey Nose was a gopher. He was a coffee boy for everybody. Around the Purple Gang, they, all they did was party. They did coke. They did all different types of drugs back then. Joey Melnis, Michael Melnis, they were the killers. I think Donnie, too. They were the killers. Mancuso wasn't no killer. He was just an errand boy. He was an errand boy for them. Xavier James. Bruno made the top 50 richest mob boy. Bruno? Oh, you're talking about Anthony Bruno, like Francese? I think you're talking about Anthony Bruno from the Philly. If so, probably probably right. Anthony Delicato, no. He was never a boss, so it has to be that Bruno. Um, Dom, rest in peace. Booby and Fat Matt. Yeah. Listen, Booby, I only had a short time to know him. He was a kid. He wasn't even 18 years old. Uh, it was only maybe two or three weeks. I knew him, but Matt, I grew up with. Matt did anything we would ask of him, especially when he was working for Michael Sullivan and myself, selling cocaine. Um, we were always together. The three of us were always together in school, after school. We had a lot of fun, a lot of laughs, and may he rest in peace. And condolences to his family, to his mother, if she's still alive, father, and his, daughter, and his sister. For who? Uh, Matthew Gillick. Oh, okay. Matthew Gillick. So there's um, comments of Vinny Asario died yesterday. Vinny Asaro? Vinny Asaro, I, I didn't, haven't heard that, but if he died. Comments. Huh? Yeah, it's a couple of comments that, that Asaro died. Oh, then may he rest in peace. I know, I think he was in his 90s. So um, when time's up, your time's up. But you know what? He had a long run. He was out there for a while, beat the government on the Lutanza heist case. More power to him. And I think when I'm going to jail for a stupid case, that that's 
as wild as he is, had an argument with somebody, and I think they burnt the car in the street. But teach his own. Well, Morgan, Big Dom, was your crew into stealing cars? My girlfriend's IROC was stolen from New Jersey <laughs> in around 89, and the shell of the car was found off Randall's Avenue, Throg's Neck. Uh, no, but I know the group that was. They were close with Stephen DeLuca. Um, and actually, after I had the beef with Stephen, my IROC got stolen, and Stephen knew. We had no insurance. I had no insurance on the car at the time. So, yeah, they, they took it, come out of the building. My car is gone. I'm like, I got to be the biggest idiot. Uh, but it happens. And I know who did it, but so be it. How often do you work out? I'm in the gym almost every day. So even my days off, I'll go in. And even on my days off, I'll do a light cardio because I'm not cutting up right now. But even though I am, I did drop weight. So I'm doing a lot of light lifting i'm trying to maintain about 225 to 230 in that range um in the next few weeks i'm going to be bulking back up i'm going to try to go up to maybe about 245 um but on my days off i'll go in and do a lot of ab work side work and then if i some calf raises just all different different body parts that i feel have been neglected or i haven't been working too hard with and then there's some days that I do have a workout. It's not my day off. And I, if I feel really drawn, those are the days I'll take off. I listen to my body, basically. Um. Dom, don't you think being single is the best gift? Not really. Not really. Listen, marriage is very difficult at times. It truly is. But it's nice to even have a companion all the time, uh, somebody who loves you deeply, that you know they have the, their support. Um, and they're there. They're not there for the money. They're there for you, uh, for the person you are deep down. But it, it's difficult. It becomes difficult at times. It doesn't always work. But just like anything, uh, it's just putting in the effort, trying, and making it work. If it, you know, If it's meant to be, it's meant to be. If not, uh, it's not, but no, I wouldn't take the single life over married life. That's for sure. So Bruno and Delicato says, meet me in the Bronx, Dom. We have some unfinished business. Okay. Where is that one? Right here. Oh, damn. They even have the picture of Bruno. Wow. See when that was open, that account. You could go on, just click on it while you have it. So I'm curious. I want to see the year because that's how you could tell if it's him. I doubt if it's him. So, uh, okay. I'll, I'll look it up later. But, um, okay, whatever. So. Uh, did you already know Bruno or when did you meet him? No, I met Bruno in jail. Um, we met in jail. Right away, I put him on the phone with my Uncle Peter, Pete the Neck. And uh, that was it. That was it. Uh, that was in, I'd say, the mid-90s when I met Bruno. CJ, thank you for the contribution. Are the Bananos in Canada on the Mikey nose? No, they broke off. They broke off from the Bananos. They're doing their own thing because they don't respect anybody there anymore. They're doing their own thing. And nobody's going to go up there and bust a grape. So times have changed. They moved on, and that's it. Joe C. was an earner. Yes, he is. He's an earner. Nice guy. Like him. Won't back down. So he's a tough guy, too. Guy, give him that. Dom, did you go to St. Raymond's? No, I actually went to Monsignor Scanlon, St. Benedict, St. Teresa's. Never went to St. Raymond's, the grammar school, nor the high school. <clears throat> did you know the Calabrese uh, from Staten Island? They are OG. The who? The Calabrese. <laughs> No, at Staten Island, no, I didn't know them. I knew Calabrese out of uh, Chicago, Nicholas. There's nothing anywhere about Vinny Asaro passing away. Figured that, but who knows? Asaro was shelved. Yes, he was shelved in my era. He was shelved. I never met him as a friend. Um, and I know uh, Jerry Asaro, we would always meet. Never met Vinny, so. Um, hey, Dom, did you play... Bobbing for apples. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, I could tell you whose apples I was bobbing for. So, Dom, did you know little Robert Lino? Uh, yes, met him a few times. He was in my crew, if it's the Robert Lino you're talking about. Uh, seemed like a nice guy, but I didn't know him that well. We just tender hands with him, controlling him. Dom, how did you know Vinny killed 12 uh, personally? He told you? I thought made guys aren't supposed to talk about hits after they happen. So true. Yes, he did tell me. Um, he did tell me. That's how close we were. And I didn't know the particulars of them, but I knew somewhere, uh, like with the guys with Sally Daz, there was a bloody mess inside the van. Uh, and Vinny made sure to tell me who was with him on all 12 hits. But that person, even though he's with Vinny on every hit, he never pulled the trigger himself. So, If Vinny G and Ronnie G had a fist fight, who would you put your money on? Vinny G? If it ever happened. Who? Vinny G or Ronnie Vinny G. Vinny Gorgeous or, or Ronnie, Ronnie G? Um, I don't know. I never saw uh, Ronnie fight. I have to put my money on Vinny because I know Vinny will do everything he can to win. But also you have an age barrier now. Vinny's in his 60s. Ronnie's not. So I'm sure Ronnie's much stronger, but Vinny's just determined. Vinny has the heart of a lion and won't stop. So that's the difference. Still ratting on Vinny, please. No, listen, Giacomo. Not ratting. Remember, the government has all this information from 20 years ago that I gave them. Not ratting, brother. Not ratting. So please. You know, you want to throw a negative comment, just be accurate, and I'm good with that. Uh, yeah, uh, what's that? Terry Overville. No, your mother could be rich going on black. Blacked. It's your mother. Remember, your mother, put your daughter there. She needs the money. We don't need the money. So, and even if we did, my wife has too much pride and integrity. How does he so, know about the site? I don't know. Maybe his mother's on it. Or no, yeah, his mother. Roldan probably has his wife on there too to make money where he's living in Winter Park. So, you know. <clears throat> Dom, did the Bananos have interest in West Coast, Cali, or Vegas? Um, did we have interest? Actually, there was somebody out in Vegas. I was supposed to fly out there on a Learjet uh, to go collect money for a guy, um, Taylor Brenton his name. So I'll go into those stories at a later date, but big, big time gambler, big money. He was with the Elks club, all the elite people. So um, we'll go into that at a later date. Uh, do you think nose will still be boss when he comes home? Uh, yes. He has that top position. Giant Joe's in control that he didn't get violated. So yes, of course he'll have that top position. So, um, but who really wants it this day and age? Who really wants it? So it is what it is. Who knows? Uh, Giacomo, thank you for that. Come on, guys. Be respectful. Thank you. I appreciate that, Giacomo. You keep bashing Roldan. What, what if it ain't him? That's no good. The Bronx, you're right. What if it ain't him? I have a feeling it is him because it's funny how a guy tells us maybe a month ago in, was it federal court? I think he testified that he watches my show constantly. And he's vindictive enough to do something like that because it's funny. Nobody ever passed uh, statements like that prior. Prior. So it's funny. And they lost in federal court. They lost because of, Catching him all in his lies, all in his lies. I even have the tape, so I'm going to come out with that hard, folks. Hard tape of him in a police police station. Contradict his federal testimony. He didn't know they were recording him. So wait till you see that. So Giacomo, no worries, Dom. Due respect, families, brother. Thank you. People want to say you have nasty comments. Say it with me. Say it with me. Well, I guess they're going to be keyboard tough guys, so whatever. But, you know, attack my family, you'll see a different Dominic. Sorry, I'm just human. Uh, I change, but I'm still human. Did you ever extort legitimate business people? No. No, 1,000%. 1,000%. 
did not. Uh, I wouldn't do it. That wasn't my style. If legitimate business people were doing illegal activities like numbers, loan shock, and then they're going into the streets, that's a different story. But no, no, there was times that no, that's maybe why I had a good relationship with legitimate people. I wasn't in their pockets. That's Camilla, for damn sure. Dominic, tell about Uncle Luca. Uncle Luca, that's coming. I just been tied up with other things and uh that's coming soon. My uncle Luca, may he rest in peace. Shame. I wish I'd die in my Ferrari with a crash, but and I have forty eight million dollars to leave to somebody. But um Rest in peace, Fluff Fluff. Thank you. Yes, my little baby. Uh, I miss her. I miss her a lot, especially in the mornings, even at night. Uh, my wife will stay up late. I'm like, I'm going to bed. And I walk upstairs with my little Fluff Fluff. She put a head here on my shoulder, and we're going up together. Um, I miss her. I definitely miss her a lot. Um, Giacomo says, you used to drink every day. Okay. I used to drink. I used to party you know, almost every day as a kid. But remember, folks, my kid days, by 22, I was in jail. So from 22 to basically 32, I was locked up. So we're four months on the street. So, you know, every day when. So So Jeffrey says, was there anyone, could, anyone who could have competed with Messino that day? Was anyone else proposed for boss? If there was one guy who could have given him problems, who would have it been? Spiro. Hands down. Spiro is well-liked. Um, definitely. Definitely. But Messino had a shield when he had his brother-in-law there. Spiro was loyal to Messino as well. And everybody knew Ristelli wanted Messino in that position. So they respected it. And in my opinion, there wasn't. I think if guys, if the three captains, Big Trin, um, Sonny Red, Sonny Black was still there, uh, it's a different story. It's a different story. Even Carmine Galante, if he was still alive, different story. Now you have men. You have men that people feared that were dangerous. So I think different. But, you know, the tables turn. There's, you know, changes in a different group, different times. David, thank you for your contribution. Again, once again, thank you. Giuseppe, my man, don't put your wife in front of the camera. You would subject her to the trolls. That talk shit, don't do it. Yeah, no, we're not going to. We're not going Philly to. Philly Bob, what's in your heart more, New York or Florida? Um, I'll always miss New York, but New York has changed. It's not like it was back in the day. So I like Florida. I like where I'm living. I like the weather. I like the atmosphere. I like the people. And uh, it's just a different way of life. But if we're talking back in the day, I would say New York hands down. But New York is not what it once was, so it's different. David uh, Van Etten, thank you. Favorite place for seafood in City Island? Back in the day, I used to like, I think, Portofino's and the Lido. I don't think they're there anymore, but those were two good places in City Island. Do the bananas kick up money to Vinny's wife? I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure they, they should look out for his wife. They should look out for Vinny. Uh, but who knows? I, I don't know. I haven't been there. And uh, Spiro, I think, owned the restaurant Don Pepe's in Ozone Park. No, from my understanding, it was, um, what's his name, with the Genovese crime family. Um, old man, great, really nice guy. Um, I'll get his name in a minute. It'll take a while. Um, the truth, Dom, have you been watching John Wolf's videos? No, who is John Wolf? And what videos are you referring to? City Island isn't worth two hours trying to get over the bridge. Woo, that bridge is That's crazy. True. I can imagine it nowadays. You're right, you you're better off going early. there by boat. <laughs> Oh, Portofino's is still there. Okay. I'm with you, Dom. Just say the word. Thanks, Pete. Word is peace. Peace. Let's keep peace. <laughs> Thank you, though. What's up, Dom? Did you ever eat at Little Charlie's on Kemir? Kemir? Kemir back in the days? I don't think so. Where, I, where we did eat was Greasy Nick's or for sure Road. 
They, they had the best burgers back then. That was like a treat. Oh, we're going to Greasy Nick's. Everybody was happy. A little hole in the wall. That's all it was. Those are the best. <clears throat> Guys, we're going to start wrapping it up. Um, again, stay tuned for tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow might be an early day because I might have to go down to Miami for EG. Um to meet up with some restaurateurs um, and clubs. And we might be getting some exclusivity on the party boats down there. That there was a gentleman that I met. He has one of the best sushi restaurants in Miami. He's doing a sushi boat. There's a pool on the boat. I mean, it's really tropical, nice. And he says he's going to, uh, he loved DJ, loved it that much. So he says he's doing two locations going to put me in plug me in for it so if i do do it tomorrow i'll let everybody know i'll be doing the live at 8 8 a.m on thursday we're going to shoot for about 5 p.m and then friday we'll be doing the 12 12 o'clock show but i like switching the times up so because i know some people can't come on at 12 they can't come on at 8 they, but five o'clock so it gives everybody a chance to integrate to come on the live we have different comments different people and people will always try to keep your comments respectful. If you have anything negative, say say it about me. Again, you wouldn't like it when I you don't. I know you don't like it when I say your mother, sister, or uh, daughter would be on a porn site. They should be doing it, and they probably are since you know so well about those sites. But um, it's not nice. Keep it respectful and uh, stuff like that. People like that, if they continue, those are the people I will block, and that's it. So that's the way I get back. I will block you. And that's it. So everybody go to egvodka.com. Order your vodka today, 100% organic, gluten-free. And we're going to do a subscription base. And also we're going to set something up for the holidays, bulk ordering and stuff. And if you have any type of erectile dysfunction, uh, if it's not as solid or hard as it once was as you were younger, also go to the site. Everything's confidential. Everything's private. Fill out the form. The doctor will contact you and work it out. You'll get a package in the mail. Nobody knows what's in the package. And you will be happy and so will your woman. And then also, if you have problems focusing or your energy, there's the Mind Drive on the manshot.com website. You could go click on and get them two pills in the morning, two at night. And you're sure to be focused, energized, and everything else. With that, folks, uh, you want a good cigar, too, go to alwayslitcigars.com. Get your cigars today. They are hand-rolled, and you won't be disappointed. We'll actually be coming out with our own cigar. It's called the Three Capos. Let me show you the our logo, too. We already have the logo done. Uh, really, really nice. Uh, my partner blew it out of the water with this one. Um, unbelievable, unbelievable. Uh, I'm really impressed. So let me just find it. I could show everybody. We'll turn it sideways so you see the big picture. Don't, coming to you soon. There you go, folks. Oh, darn. Darn, darn, darn. This is what happens with these phones. Okay, let's see. Where are we? I don't know how it just went all the way up there. All right, folks, there it is. That's going to be our label, our logo. It's going to be raised. We're going to have T-shirts with that. My partner is working on all that. So, uh our cigars will be hand rolled, uh, fresh, and before we do put it out, we're definitely, 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 I'll definitely try and make sure they're good, they're quality. That's for sure. And knowing my partner, he's a cigar fanatic, fanatic. Um, so cool. Southeast 31, respect all women. Yes, it should be. You should respect women. They have nothing to do with this. Uh, we have to be grateful that my wife does come on to help out with the comments. And we banter back and forth. It's all good. So a lot of people say they like it. It's entertaining. And uh, that's it. At the end of the day, it's about putting out good content, quality. And if haters want to hate, hate on me. You can say what you want about me. 
I'm okay with that. But. So one last question. Yes. Selfie uh, 31. Dom, do you ever read the comments and feel embarrassed for your fans? Um, I feel embarrassed for the people that they're so simple minded. They can't come up with anything better, but interjecting people that shouldn't be interjected into this. As far as the fans, I got a lot of fans that stick up for me. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Um, and the only thing is you'll see my frustrations. You'll see anger when I know, I have a feeling I know who's behind it, uh, when they repetitive with something, but, um, it is what it is at the end of the day. To me, they're just little people that have nothing better to do. Like um, Bella has stated, they, they're trolls. They sit in their basements waiting for the alerts to come. And then let me post something good. And then they feel, ah, oh, I got him. I said something good. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. So anyway, people, you're damn right. Maddie is the boss. She's definitely the boss. You have no idea, folks. You have no idea. So what about grandma's estate? We'll be in the courts with that, too, with grandma's estate. So I'll go into that with Joe Barone. That's another thing I have to set up, make sure we have the right timing. we just out on different schedules. Folks, thank you again. Oh, you don't want me to go, huh? Jeremy, thank you for your contribution. Dom, great show. Looking forward to every day. Sending love and support from Australia. Australia in the house. Much love to you, German. Appreciate it. Um, guys, Mont thank you. Montoya says, Dom, I keep asking, do you have a cup holder on your mower? E.G., baby. Yes, we do have cup holders. <laughs> we have nice ones, too. But on your Is mower, there any here? on your mower. Uh, no, I don't see any here. No, leave it. We'll go. I'll put that. Yeah, I'll show you. Right in the bag. I'll, uh, oh, you have to make me get up. There we go, the I'm, old man. I'm the boss. Yeah, I know, you're the boss. You're I'll tell you the boss up. But he said it's on the mower, meaning... I know, this is going to be on the mower. Here, oh, folks. Oh. Here we go. These will be up for sale, e.g. Vodka. See? Everything's quality, folks. Everything's quality we put out. When we do events, these get given out to people. We don't play games. We don't play games, folks. This is all quality. People can't believe it the quality. So, um, again, uh, thank you, everybody. Much respect. And that's about it. Your wife is a class act. Thank you. Thank you. It's Maddie with a Y. Uh, no, it's Maddie with an IE. Or IE. Well, those that know yeah, that's, from New York, it's Y. Uh, <laughs> hey, Dom, what would happen if a civilian tried to enter a social club? They could go in. Certain clubs will allow them in. They'll be careful. But um, I, I don't see any problem. So, everybody, I wish you the very best. Have a great day. Hope everybody was entertained with today's show. And kids, streets aren't the way to go. Stay away from the streets. Stay away from the life. Uh, don't be pulled in, sucked in, or glamorized by the John Gotti's, Joey Molino's, Vinny Bashiano's of the world. It's not what it seems to be. It's all smoke and mirrors. The streets are not your friends. And with that, peace out. Until tomorrow, we should be live at 8 a.m. Yeah, I know. Well, I could do it by myself. Yeah, so. not we. <laughs> no, me. So yeah. peace out, people. Much love and respect.